everyone, Cream Ray here, and today I have General Isua on with us. General, how's it going? No, I'm good, man. And you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us today. No, thank you. So can you just please introduce yourself to the viewers? Yeah, my name is uh, Jano Isua. I play, a, I play a defender in the Canadian Premier League, and I've been playing with FC Edmonton for the past three seasons. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm born originally in Cameroon, that's West Africa. And um, I am right now in West Africa for whole holidays with my family. Nice. So how long are you going to be staying over there for right, right now? A month. So basically I have uh, two more days, like two more weeks to be here. So and after that, that's it. Nice. So how did, you, how did you become a professional footballer? Man, like... The journey wasn't easy though. Like you know, coming from Africa, it's all it's like always difficult because uh, we have like so many players playing back home, so many players that are even way more talented than I am. But like I've I've, I've just always like I really had like a, like a really tough beginnings because like uh, from where I'm from, we didn't have like like that much like that many teams, and even the team the team that I used to play with like the journey. Like we didn't have the best like uh, facilities, the best equipment to play, you know. But like uh, I just kept fighting, and I had a few coaches that would always tell me like what to do. And I uh, I was lucky enough I got scouted by one of the biggest football academy in West Africa, that's in Douala, the Brazil Football Academy. So I left there. That's where likes like Sam Elito, most big players in Cameroon, they came from. So I, I went there, I did like a three-year formation there. And then after that, I started playing professional in Cameroon. Then uh, we, we played the Cameroon Cup final. Then I got scouted there by the scout. Then I went to Orange County in the USA. That's how things started for me. So you said you got scouted by, by in, from a person in Orange County? No, like uh, I played in, in the Cam like the Cameroon Cup final is really big. That's where yeah. we have like the president from Cameroon is there, other scouts from other places. So like there was this scout, he's Cameroonian, but like he works with clubs from the USA. With yeah, the US so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's you, how I got scouted. So when you got scouted um, from that cup game, where did the where did the scout take you? Right away, when I got scouted, like I had a meeting with them at the office, and then right away they told me, yeah, the thing they had, they had had a good fit for me in the USL. Yeah, so right away they just offered me a contract, and uh, things happened so fast. Two months after I got the visa for the states, and that was my first time leaving the shores of Africa. Though. It's amazing. Yeah. So yeah. You no. Know, can you just paint a picture real quick for for the viewers and myself because I've I've never been there yet to your country. Um, but how was it growing up there? Oh, like Cameroon is, is a pretty good place. Like we have uh, pretty good sites here, like tourism, all those things, you know, wildlife. It's a good place. And I think it's peaceful too, you, you know. Then, because uh, uh, like for me growing up, you know, we have both the middle age, like like, like the top class people, middle and then the low, the, the low class, which, which I think is the same in, in every society. But like here, uh, I was kind of privileged enough for my family to kind of provide me the, the basic thing that I had. So I think it wasn't easy, but I wouldn't say it was, was like tough because I had most of the, the things that I, I could get from my family, you know. So growing up wasn't that, that difficult, but like in terms of the street, like I had lots of friends that couldn't play soccer anymore because they were kind of engaged in other things, you know. But for me, uh, soccer kind of took me off the street because I, I I was schooling and I was really I really like going to school. But like in Africa, it's a little bit tough to kind of follow like uh, try to follow two things at the same time, like school and soccer. So uh, it got to a point after my after my advanced level, like I couldn't go to try get a degree because I just had to make a choice either school or soccer, you know. And and for me, soccer was was the main thing that I really wanted to do. So growing growing up wasn't was wasn't all that bad, but wasn't the greatest too. Uh, but we we just try to make the most out of it. But like soccer for sure helped me out of the streets. I had, I had friends that lost their lives. I had friends that went to prison. 
some some to date when I even see them, like I can't believe they used to we all used to be together because they just they look so different, you know. Yeah. So in, so you know, football, soccer, it kept you on the right path. Kept you forward. Yeah, for sure. And now you're making sure. you're making history in the CPO. But before we get to that, you mentioned you, you performed very well in the cup final, you, you know, where the president and everybody was watching the scout. And then you had the scout scout you and they brought you to the United States for the USL. What team were you playing in the USL? Did you get signed in? I was playing with, uh, yes, I was playing with Orange County Soccer Club. I, I played a season with them because I came there in mid-season. I came, I came there with like 16 games left. So I managed to play, um, I managed to start and finish 13 games and the rest I came on as a sub. From the beginning, I was coming on as, as a sub. Then uh, after that, I started playing Then I played every, I played 13 games in a row. So out of uh, 16 games, I played all to get uh, 15. Then I, I played uh, 13, start, I started 13 and finished it. So, nice. Yeah. Well, was that USL 1 or USL Championship? USL Championship. Back then, there was no USL 1 then. It was just USL. That okay. was, in 20, was in 2017, I think. That's interesting. Yeah, I just, that's something. Thanks. I just learned something new. So, um. How old were you when you got signed in your country in Cameroon? Twenty years. Twenty years old. You were twenty. I, I I just yeah I just turned twenty. I left nine. I left a little bit nineteen because I turned twenty in in the states. Yeah. Because my, my my birthday is August six, and I left Africa. I think February. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I turned twenty there. Yeah. So you, I mean, you signed in your country. Was it like, was it a big thing for you to sign pro in your country, or was it just like normal? It's like you know, it's like whatever. How was it for you? What was your experience like? No man, it was really it was really big. I was really happy because up until then, I never really had an agent. So was me was just I was just always just playing, you know, believing in in, in in my own talent, just playing and hoping like maybe one day someone will see me and give me the chance, you know, because like. Just like I said, back when we have so many good players, man, but like not everybody get the chance to to really go show what they can do, you know. So but for me it came, it came when I really wanted it and it came and I took it right away. So it was well, it was a really big thing for me because I got the contract here in Cameroon and I signed it here. So going going to the States, I already knew knew where I'm going to play and how things were gonna be. So it was just left on me to go prove myself, you know. That's amazing. And, yeah. you know, you believed in yourself. And then when the scout came into the picture, it's like you had someone else believe in you as well, right? And now you're a full yeah. fledged yeah. professional playing in your home country. Yeah. What changed around you? You know, did people start to treat you different? Or what started, started to change around you when you signed your first professional contract? Yeah, I think uh, a, lot, a lot of things changed, honestly. Like, because from where I come from, we have people that played. We have people that played, like, they, they played big in Cameroon. They played in some uh, like really big, but then they never really had the opportunity to go pro. So I, I, I was, I, I am one of the talent that just came through like so quick. So right, right now for my neighborhood, I am the only professional player that plays at my broad. Yeah. So for me, it's something big like playing at my broad at this age too. So that that changed a lot because even when I when I go home, before I used to walk freely because back home in Africa. When you play soccer, like in Cameroon, like you, you get a lot of respect from the street, you know, mm -hmm. like from kids, kids will always see you as your role models and stuff. So like whenever, whenever I go home now, like like now I'm, I'm home, like mostly I'm home, you know, just stay home. So even when I go out, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit watching my step, but like before I would, I would just walk out freely, you know, go play soccer freely. But now I kind of pick out, pick and choose where I want to go, where I want to play because and the time I, I, I want to go, you know, so, cause like from my area, I'm like the only one that had that opportunity to go pro. So everyone kind of looks up to me, and I think I have, I'm kind of an a, a, an example. So the, the the things I do, I really I know for sure kids are watching, you know. So I always just try to pass the the right the right message and and things that I know can help them. So things for sure things change. It's amazing and very powerful what you just said. Yeah. What do you think was different about you? Because you mentioned that there was other players that were as good or maybe possibly better. What do you think that was different about you that made you stand out on the, on the field and off the field? 
yeah, for me, like, because I, I am one person, I talk more, I talk less, but I work more. Like, I, I'm someone that I leave the example, you, you, you know. So every coach that I've had days right back from my academy days, they will, they will always tell me, some some will even tell me to, to talk because I barely talked, you know. But now going into the professional level, like, I started to talk a little bit more because I know sometimes it is needed, you know. But, like, one thing I know for sure is, like, my mindset has always been my... Uh, my uh my 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 own weapon because like whenever i find myself in, in any place i just just believe like okay right now i just need to bring up who i am on the pitch you know because i know for sure off the pitch i am someone that is easy to get along with but like on the pitch i have to do the job and i try to lead if if uh even if, if we have to run five times maybe I'll, I'll try to run six times or eight seven just try to do a little bit more so for me my mindset even my friends from home here like some of them are so talented, but like whenever we play, they also tell me like, bro, like your work ethic, uh, your mindset is something I think I would like to copy, you know. So I, I always just believe in my mindset. Like, man, even uh, even things don't go my way, but I try to make to take the positive out of every negative situation, you know. So because I know for sure coming, I'm always I'm always kilometers from home, I'm miles away from home, so there is no room to slack off, you know. So I try to always keep stay focused to my to my own objective, which is not easy most often. But like I just believe me, you know, if I choose football, football is not a game for 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 people that are like like slack minded people, you know. So I mean, I just stay focused. So for me, I, I would say it's just my mindset and my work ethic. How do you stay focused? No, me is it's pretty simple for me because I have my routine that I started doing way back. So I believe in them because that's where I am, where I am today. Because then I try to just cut and change, change things from here, here and there. Because like going, leaving West Africa, going into, in, in, into like, like the modern societies, you know, I try to learn things that are there. I try to adapt them into my own routine that I had way back. So staying focused is something that I, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's hard because I'm always away from home. But like it's somehow easy too because I talk with my family a lot. Or on the phone, like we have like a group chat, we always talk there. So that's that's just mostly what I do. And then mostly it's it's, it's funny. But when I'm bored, if I'm bored, I just like to train. Mostly mm-hmm. when people bored, they play they play video games or stuff. I don't play video games. I watch mostly movies. I like, I like music a lot. So whenever I'm bored, I just get my headphones. I can go train. So that's why I always that that keeps me focused. Nice. What are some tips yeah. that you could share with players that want to go pro? What are three things you could share with them? Yeah, for me, at my own level, because I am still trying to climb the ladder, you know, I, I am still learning too. But like, for me, you just, you know, just just be yourself, but like try to, try to copy the good example. Because some, sometimes a player might be young and then they just, they don't just know what to do, you know, they, they turn, they, they start copying examples that maybe they shouldn't really look into them. But for me, I would just say maybe they should call, they just try to copy the right example and then just try to believe in themselves, first of all, because if you don't believe, you cannot achieve what you want. And then also they need to make their work rate to be top. Always have that mindset where if, you, if you're training with someone, if they train for 30 minutes, always try to get that extra 10 minutes in because that's what makes the difference, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah. This, those are great points. Let's tap into the league, the CPO. So you went, you, yeah. did you go from the USO and then into the CPO? Is that how it went? No, I had a, I had one, one, one play rough year, like almost one play rough year, because I played the USL and after that I had a, I had scout, uh, I got scouted by LA Galaxy, and I and I went with uh, like on a month of of uh, training with them because that was when they. The USL season was done, so but the MLS was still training. So I went in with their first team. I trained with them. Woodwood was pretty good. And this coach, late, uh, late coach Ziggy, he's, he's, he's passed away now. So he scouted me to come with LA Galaxy, which I did, and was pretty good. And everything was going to be good. But like uh, things didn't go as planned between them and my agent, my, my, my former agent. That's my first agent. Things didn't go as planned. So... I uh, I had one year where I had to make a decision to either move with a different agent, you know. So I just had to wait that year. So I came back home. I played locally for a year because I wanted to to try and find a different agent. 
So I played one year in Cameroon. Then after that, I went back. I got a new agent that that took me to the CPL. Nice. So yeah. this this is an amount of good things. That, I mean, an amount of interesting things that I found right here right now. So you said that you went to LA. Everything was going good, and then something bad happened between your agent and the club or the coach. It was the club, right? The club, the club. Yeah, because I had a meeting at the end of the. Uh, at the end of the, uh, the 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 training, I had a meeting with a coach before I was coming home for holidays. So I left Orange County to LA to train for a month, then I left there for Cameroon. So when I talked with the coach, everything was good. The coach really loved my stay. He really loved me. Even most of the players were like really welcoming. They really liked me. But then, like they, you know how these things are. You know things didn't like in terms of they maybe they like 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 the figures, the figures they maybe they, they didn't match with what the agent was thinking. So. So I think things didn't go as planned, you know. So I right. just had to, uh, yeah, that just slowed me down a little bit. So I had to come home, play in Cameroon for one year before I looked to to go back to that's, North America. That's, that's yeah, I understand. That's very interesting because, you know, simply because something didn't match up with the agent, it really affected you on, on, on the pitch. So you didn't get to make that move up into the MLS with the LA Galaxy. Now, with saying yeah. that, it shows the amount of power an agent has um, and then the yeah. amount of influence uh, for player, yeah. working with players. Yeah. So did you did you guys yeah. have a conversation saying, hey, no matter the figures, I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm playing in the MLS, I'm playing for LA Galaxy. Was that a conversation you guys had or was it just based off his decision? No, you know, back home, it's pretty different because like right now I have the experience, you know, I have the, 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 the experience now. I've been playing professional five years now. So I know, like, okay, I know how to talk with agents more and stuff like like that. But but, but back then, like, the agent was just we just depended all in the agent. Especially whenever when you leave home, you're a little bit naive. You don't really know how these things work. So so you all you know is just to deal with stuff on on the field, and then you think the agent gonna handle stuff off the field, right? So I didn't really think I was in a, in, in a position to make a decision about things like that. So for me, I was just waiting a contract. Whenever a contract comes, I sign the contract. So I didn't really like want to think like, hey, maybe try to ask or maybe what's happening. And then, you know, so when when things just backfired, everything was just a little bit sad, you know. And then and, and he never really told me this is it. I, I only got to know when I was trying to move to Orange County because, uh, I mean, move to FC Mountain because they had to transfer my uh, my international uh, transfer certificate to uh, to Orange County. So, but that 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 was already with LA Galaxy because that move was gonna happen. So then that's because I was close with the team manager. Then he only disclosed that information to me that time. But I didn't. I had no idea about that. Got it. Can you can you share yeah. three, can you share three tips with the viewers that you know you know watch this video and might get the opportunity where an agent comes in the picture for them and then you know this is their first time interacting. So what would three tips that you would share with them? Um, about working with agents? No, for me, I think uh, working with agents, because first of all, agents always take you to where you, you want to go. So for me, what, what I would say is, before you sign with the agent, you need to trust them. For, for me, first thing is to trust the agent, because when you trust the agent that way, you're going to avoid all these other things, right? So you have to trust the agent, and you have to make sure you two are on the same page. Like, you, the agent needs to know what you want, which, like what, which level you want to play in, in terms of just the level, maybe, okay, if you want to go for the figures, if, if that's something you want, all those things. So I think, first of all, trust, then you guys need to discuss and be on the same page and, and, and then just make the right decision with which agent you want to go with because they are very important in our careers. Yeah, got it. Great yeah. tips. Yeah. So um, we're on the, you know, towards the end here. What sacrifices have you and your family made for soccer? Yeah, I think the, the main, like the most important one is me not being home. Because I always left home when I was 17. I've always been away from home because I was always going with uh, with this academy or that one, you know. So I, so since I turned 17, I've never stayed in my with my family in the same house for more than a month. So I'm, I'm always away for a year. I'm home for two weeks or a month. And then I'm gone again for two years. I'm back for a month till today. So I'm, I'm always away. Two years, three years, four years. I come back for one month. 
So I'm always away from home. That's why I always appreciate every moment I get to be home right now. You know, like now it's been, it's been four years. This is me. I just came to Cameroon. It's been two weeks now, almost two weeks now. Mm. So and that started ever since you were 17? Yes, I started when I turned 17. Mm. How important is it for you to keep a healthy mind and body? And for, you know, all, like just like I said, it's always different with every soccer player. But for me, my mind is I always I I I am a very spiritual person. Like uh, I pray a lot. I pray a lot because I I believe where I am today is Jesus. You know, is God. So I, I do pray a lot. Like we are we are we we are all sinners in the face of the earth. But on this earth, but like I always believe in like trying to do the right things. You know, even though I'm gonna make mistakes here and there. So that that's how I, when I'm at peace up here, my my I know my body is clean. Then I just walk, you know, just train, try to do the right things. Then I'm fine. Nice. Well, um, you know, you're playing in the CPL right now. So, what are, what are three things you like about the league so far? You know, because you have experience in your country in Cameroon, you have experience in uh, the USL and the MLS. Now in the CPL, the Canadian Premier League, they've been going on since 2019, so two years now. What are three things you like about the CPL right now? I think CPL is 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 a good league because it gives up um, opportunities, you know. Because when I got mine, like I, I had no idea where I was gonna play, but like CPL, I think it's a good league. It gives opportunities to young players and players that are starting their car their careers, and from every player, it's very important for game time. So just the fact that you 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 have the ability to play in CPL, it gives you that game time. Maybe that all, all other leagues are gonna like tap off that you you know. But you CPL gives a good platform for every young player to try to show what they have to do. And then it, it's a league that is like is growing in terms of me of like the media. So I think like they me they 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 are really covering a lot of games and stuff. So people know about CPL worldwide. So I think that's something that is really good about the league too. Right. So and and, and then maybe maybe may the 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 level of the game is going year by year, 2019, 2020, 2021. Like each year you see the 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 intensity of the league is is changing. Like the clubs are beginning to be more competitive. Like clubs are getting in, in each other's faces, which is really good for the league. You know. That's good. So yeah. I wanted to ask you this a bit earlier because we didn't really talk a lot about on the field stuff. Um, you know, I know I've experienced this myself. So, you know, going back to when you made your first move to the USL, moving to the States for the first time, you know, how are you, you're considered an outsider, right? Like in this type of situation, how has it been for you being an outsider, not being it? You've played in your home country, but now when you're going to these other countries, you know, you have players that might treat you different or so on and so forth. So how has your experience been and what have you been, what have you, what have you done in order to, have, to deal with these things? Yeah, I think uh, I have pretty, I've pretty been lucky, you know, with the kind of places that I, I find, I always found myself. In the US, it was okay. It was okay. My teammates were okay. Then uh, in the, uh, in, in CPR, in Ed Edmonton, I had, I think I made a lot of brothers there, like not even just teammates, like brothers, you, you know. So that really made me really comfortable from the first day I stepped foot in Edmonton. My, my old coach, uh, Jeff Paulus, he really welcomed me there. And then right away, he just made me click with the team. And then I met some brothers there that like, I'm, I'm always going to remember them, you know, going forward. So like I, I was really comfortable there. And then on the field, like they will always help me develop my game because most of them had, a, had more experience playing professionally than me. So I always had guys on, 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 on my team. They will always tell me, bro, I think you have this quality. So try to do this, do this. Because for me, my talent was just raw. But now I try to mix my talent with experience. So that, that, that makes me even better. Yeah. Nice. So like things, 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 things like that. I've always learned. I've always learned from that. You know, I've always known like, okay, for me, first of all, my mindset, like I said, I try to build my own defensive world around me. That means that no matter what you do, I don't, even if you try to lay like throw stuff at me to hurt me, but I just have that word around me that like, oh, yeah, I'm gonna be hurt, but I won't show you I'm hurt. Like I'll go home, I'll, I'm 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 going I'm gonna be pissed, but I always deal with it because I have that word around me. Yeah, because like one thing I learned in football, you don't have to show weakness, you know. 
So that's how I've, I've always been doing because, man, just like you said, you're always away from home. No mom is there, no brother is there to talk to you, you know. So I make my own decisions. If I make a bad decision, I'm going to live with it. And right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, strong, strong. So, you yeah. know, I, the, I wanted to mention real quick, Canada, I mean, Canada's a bit different. People are different from people in the U.S. <laughs> people for sure, for, for sure, bro. For sure, yeah, man. It's for a little... Sure. It's like yeah. the wild, wild west over there in Canada. We're, we're a little more peaceful, you know. <laughs> no, bro. Canada, 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 like Canada is nice, bro. It's like the nicest place I've, I've been, man. Yeah. yeah, Canada is the nicest place for me. Some nice yeah. people in Canada. Last question: yeah. um, What's your most memorable soccer moment in your life? So when I ask you that, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I think my uh, the most memorable soccer moment was the day I, I had my first red card. It's weird, bro. Cause like I, I was playing back home, yeah, I was playing back home, bro. Like I was playing back home, and like my mom never really believed I could play, you know. So she she never seen me play. She never seen me play. Then uh, we had this final. We were playing this little competition. We had this final, and then my mom, the friends told her like, yeah, your son is so good. You should come watch him play. You know, I was so hyped up. I was so hyped. Like my my mom coming to watch me for the first day, and then like <laughs> one minute into the game. I don't know, you know, like the, I was so not in, like I was, maybe like my mind was so much more of my mom watching me than even playing. So I, I I could remember like the game started and I wasn't even ready. Someone ran past me, I just grabbed them. I was last man and then red card, I got so, I, I just went off the field and then, you know, I cried. I could remember I cried the whole day, you know. So that was the day I got my first red card. That was when I was, I think I was 17, yeah. Because that was when my mom started really watching me play. Yeah, that's so a nice that was like story. that was like my, yeah, yeah that was that was that was, that was the most memorable moment you know yeah all right well I have the this I have the fun questions now it's the five speed questions it's basically oh, all yeah. favorite so um the first one is uh, what's your favorite team my favorite team is Manchester Manchester United Manchester United favorite player uh Nemanja Vidic. Favorite I, I used to like him a lot. Mm. Favorite pair of cleats? Uh, now Puma. 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 I like Puma cleats. Yes. Which ones? Puma Future. Future. Okay. Um, what's your favorite? What's your favorite food in from back home in, in Canada? From back home, we have this dish. Uh, it's really heavy, but I, I really like it. They call it a fufu and a eru. That's what I like eating. Then uh, in Canada, I like uh. A chicken alfredo. Chicken alfredo. Okay, nice. What's yeah, you know alfredo. you like you like music. So who's who's your favorite artist? Now uh, my favorite artist uh, I like uh, Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke, yeah. Yeah, I, I like Pop Smoke. And then back in uh, Cameroon, I like uh, my classmate. I uh, I I used to know how we went to the same school, Kameni. That's that's back home. Yeah, we she she is we she she is like getting really big now. And then uh, in uh, Nigeria, I like uh, Naira Mali. He has the same hairstyle like me too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So um, before we go, where can the where can the viewers find you? Where can they reach out to you if they have any questions? Yeah, my uh, they can find me on uh, Instagram and uh, on Twitter too. Those, those are my two uh, social media that, 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 that I use. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it. General. Before we go, yeah, I just want to uh, thank you for taking the time for joining us on the One Soccer Nation podcast today. No, man, the pleasure is all mine. I, I really enjoy sharing some of my past memories with you guys. Like it just kind of reminds me a lot, you know, of where I'm coming from. So right. I really appreciate that too. Yeah, I mean, you've traveled miles and miles, right? There's so much history yeah, and good experiences that you have. It's it's a pleasure to have you on, and and man, I look yeah. forward, I look forward to the future for yourself. In your career and yeah, so on and so forth. So that's awesome. No, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I traveled miles and I'm still traveling, man. I'm still traveling till I'm gonna retire, bro. <laughs> I, I was gonna, I was gonna say, um, I mean, back home, there's, there's a lot of work. There's, there's like once you're done your career, I mean, depending yeah. on what you want to do, if it's coaching, agent, so on and so forth, I feel like you could, be, you yeah. could have, have a big impact on back home, like once you're done. So that's amazing. Yeah, a lot, a lot. A lot, bro. A lot. Because so many people just want to, they just want to see what you have to give back, you know. 
and uh, give, giving back is something that I really want to do when I'm when I'm done. Because right now I'm already starting to do stuff too, like like making guys to always have like a, a ability. Because when I was playing, I didn't have the best materials like soccer balls, you know, all those things. So whenever I come home, I always try to get like like balls that I, I could buy, you know, that that aren't that expensive. Just come give them; it makes them happy. Just just give them something to play, you know. Yeah, it's gonna be huge again. Just yeah. Thank you, and yeah, again, what's no. the future? Thank you very much, man.